despite FAMU's coaching search only going on for a little more than two weeks, it's a really messy situation. And where they currently are, the move to a hiring firm to try to help look for their new coach is likely the best thing for everybody that's involved in this situation. Oh, yeah, it's locked on HBCU. Play my music. You are locked on HBCU, your daily podcast covering HBCU sports. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's going on, family? Welcome back to another episode of the Locked On HBCU Podcast, your number one. Daily one-stop shop for everything HBCU Athletics, Monday through Friday, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And I, of course, am Darian Gray, a.k.a. the Mouth of the South, Texas Southern alum and former TSU Herald Sports editor and current contributing writer at USA Today's Saints Wire. Thank you for going on this journey with me, making Locked On HBCU your first listen of the day every day. And remember, just because the mic cuts off and it will cut off, doesn't mean that the journey is over. It just means it's time to follow me on Twitter at South Exclusives. Starts with an S and ends with an S. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more when you go to FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. And right now, all new customers will get $150 back in bonus bets, win or lose on any $5 bet. So it's quick and easy. For you, we wrap up today's episode, and we're all over the place to be honest. We wrap up today's episode with an app that is being created or has been created and continued to being tweaked by a St. Augustine professor, and it has a high ceiling for a lot of our athletic programs and sports. Now, before that, we'll look at Norfolk State offensive coordinator or former offensive coordinator at this point because he is now with the University of Buffalo as their running backs coach. And I would love to know if you have the same reaction to that tagline that I did when I read it at first. But before any of this, FAMU is currently the biggest story in HBCU athletics. A lot of it has to do with the fact that it's a football story, but also a lot of it has to do with the fact that it's messy. Controversy sells. This is a lot of drama involved. And when you not just look at what needs to be done, look at all the things that have been done. The decision to go to a hiring firm to help hopefully ease this decision on who's going to be their new head football coach, in my opinion, is the smart call for all of the parties, right? Whether you're looking at players, alumni, Tiffany Dawn Sykes, and then maybe even the coaches themselves who – I don't know. They probably want to get this over with. They probably don't want to wait. And they don't need to wait. You have National Signing Day that's three weeks away. We need to get this done. If you're it, like the, the emphasis to be get it done quickly. If you're fam you. Now, the reason I say that this is the best, and I know some people might say, no, hiring somebody from within the program is the best. This is about the process. And it's not as if a hiring firm disqualifies what you want. You might not get it as fast as you possibly could, but it does not disqualify what you're looking for. And if James Cozy, Billy Rowe, whoever is truly the best candidate, you will eventually get what it is that you were looking for. Now, one of the reasons that I think that this is necessary not just is a good idea this is necessary you got to remember you see the flag behind me that's texas southern i know about compromise i had fred mcnair and andre johnson on the line neither one of them uh got the job i know about controversy i know about i know about just coming to a compromise and not just getting your way. Now I'm not saying it has to be, obviously it can't be Sean Gibbs at this point. I'm not saying you had Gibbs and Roley, a roll and cozy on one side and you just got to go all the way opposite. I'm not saying that, but this is a compromise. And I understand the principle of compromise, right? This is a great compromise. Now I don't think, and I think this is a misconception and I think there's been some disrespect that I'm going to address shortly. And they'll think there has been some disrespect that I'm going to address shortly. I don't think that 
Tiffany Dawn Sykes has done a terrible job managing this this uh this coaching search. I'll be honest with you. I don't think she's done a terrible job managing. And I don't know how many people feel like she's done a terrible job managing. I think people feel she did a terrible job picking, which is completely different, right? It's like I said at the top. We're looking at the process, not the selection. This is great for the process because despite the distinction I try to make between management versus selection, the truth is it's all bundled up into one and it's coaching. It's just, it's just the hiring. The hiring in general is the selection, the process, everything. And one thing she did mess up with well, she didn't communicate well. And I do think that that is something that is a big deal. I will not downplay how big of a deal communicating is, especially to some of the people who are donors, to your alumni, to people who really care. They want a little bit of transparency. They weren't able to get it. I understand the frustration. However, outside of that, her biggest flaw is picking somebody that the school didn't want. That's not a crime. That should not be treated the way that she has been treated lately. I feel the need to put a hard stance against this. Recently, recently, somebody, and I'm not even going to mention the name, but if you're on here, I'm sure you know, somebody recently mentioned that she lives down the street from the school. That is absolutely unacceptable. That is dangerous. That is inappropriate. And that's disrespectful. I don't know what the intentions were. I, I know that it was connected to her, her tardiness or whatever, that is unacceptable. I do not care the reason. And the simple fact that it has gotten this far, the simple fact that we have gotten to the point where we're talking about her habits and where she stays, and, and even if you didn't have the forethought to not do it, it still should be deemed reckless. It's still dangerous. The fact that we've gotten to this point is the exact reason we need a, a hiring firm. Many people feel like, A.D. Sykes is on a, an ego trip or some sort. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if I can necessarily say that. Don't know if I can necessarily disagree with it. So I will leave it up in the air and I will not contradict nor reaffirm that. But what I will do is say, if you feel like she's on an ego trip, and I definitely feel like there's a lot of emotional investment, if only, and, and maybe I'm letting that one person uh, cloud my judgment, but I hear how it is. I hear the conversations about A.D. Sykes, like, and I, it, it doesn't make me comfortable. I'll be honest with you. It feels a little too much. And no, I'm not playing the gender card. It just makes me uncomfortable, period. Like, I, I don't need to play the, the, the card where people, are, it's not because she's a woman. I don't care if it's because she's a woman or not. It's uncomfortable to me. And I want it to stop. I want it to stop. I'm just going to be honest with you, right? Now with this hiring firm, AD Sykes can say, because it's clear, she does not want to go in-house. Like, this is, obvious that she doesn't want to go in-house do i think she's doing a thorough search yeah i do i do think she's having a thorough coaching search it's just the fact that every time she turns over a stone and somebody who's already on the famu staff is at the bottom of that stone she chunks it because she doesn't like it at the same time that people feel entitled to the right right entitled to the right which you are entitled to the right to express how much they want somebody from in-house she wanting somebody who's not in-house, I think she's equally entitled to that right. I do. And I know many people won't agree with it because they don't want that move, but she's entitled to disagree, right? Now you have an, a, a, a hiring firm who can come in and they can say, we think this is the best person for the job. Now, if that hiring firm says that Cozy is the best person for the job or Billy Roll is the best person for the job, and she say, nah, we ain't rocking with that then I would have no choice then to agree with you that this is an ego trip. But as of right now, she just doesn't share an opinion with another group of people. I would argue there's nothing that makes her more inherently wrong than the other side. And I've spoken out against the whole closed mind, this, that, and third. I don't think that there is anything wrong with wanting to keep it in house. I don't think that there's anything wrong with wanting to go out of house. I think that you are allowed to disagree but I don't know if there's just something just at the core of it all that's wrong. We won't know what's the right decision for years down the line when we see at whoever this coach is, how they trans, uh, how it all transpires. That's when we'll know. But as of right now, to take everything out, 
get a neutral party who can come in and will foster communication with the alumni, with the with the committee. They will be able to talk and they'll be able to hear their input. They'll hear from Don Sykes and then they can make their own decision and they can report back. At the end of the day, I do believe it's still going to be Tiffany Don Sykes's decision on who's going to be the call. But she should heavily lean into what the hiring firm says. And if the hiring firm says it's somebody from out of the program, I think that alumni have to accept that unless we're going to start calling foul play. And I'm not ready to do that. Are you? One thing I am ready to do is to move on and go into Norfolk State's former head coach or excuse me, former offensive coordinator who is now a positional coach, specifically a running backs coach. On the FBS level, I think there's some similarity. Wink, wink. I think that was a terrible wink. I think that was terrible. I hope that you're on the audio side so you didn't have to hear that or see that atrocious attempt of a week. <laughs> but anywho, as we move forward with Locked on HBCU, we'll look at this new promotion that Ray Pickering got as we continue with today's episode. Today's episode is brought to you by LinkedIn, and LinkedIn is the number one place for all of your small business hires. Now, when I look at LinkedIn, I personally am sitting here like, okay, if you're a small business owner and you aren't looking for to fill your vacancy on LinkedIn, I think you're doing yourself a disservice. Over 800 million people are on LinkedIn on a daily basis. At the end of the day, there are so many things that you need to go right to have a championship team. You got to have the right people on the offensive line, defensive line, the skill positions, right? Everything's not sexy, right? The quarterback position, ooh, ah, it's great. But sometimes you need that offensive lineman and whatever that, that analogy, whatever that transfer to in your business. Go ahead and get you some offensive linemen. Go ahead and get you some defensive linemen. They say that's where you build the teams at anyway. But in order to do that, you have to go to linkedin.com slash locked on college, and you'll be able to post your job for free, not a cost to you. The only thing it's going to take you is a little bit of time, but it's not going to take you any, many, any amount of money. So go to LinkedIn.com slash locked on college. That's LinkedIn.com slash locked on college. Today's episode is also brought to you by eBay Motors. Now, eBay Motors is great if you need to fix up your car. It's great if you want to just add a little extra to your car. I think that, of course, you want to keep your car running. But you probably don't just want to get from point A to B. That's something your folks told you when they gave you your first car that wasn't that nice. Right now, now you, you're able to get your own vehicle and you don't want something that's just point A to point B. You want to get from A to B and look good while doing it. So whether you need an alternator in order to get yourself from point A to B or maybe you want some new wheels, maybe you want some, want some new tires. All you have to do is go to the My Garage section. Put your car into the My Garage section and everything that pops up will be guaranteed to fit for you, right? They have the 100% guaranteed fit in the U.S. only. Well, all you have to do is go to ebaymotors.com. That's ebaymotors.com to keep your ride or die alive. As we continue rolling on today's episode of Locked on HBCU, I appreciate you for making this your first listen of the day every day for your second listen. Make sure you're checking out Locked on Sports today. No matter the time, whether it's 5 a.m., 5 p.m., it's 24-7. First of its kind, first ever 24-7 sports network on YouTube. So go ahead and tap in and check that out. Now, let's look at Norfolk State's former offensive coordinator, Ray Pickering, who is now the University of Buffalo's running backs coach. And it was only a year that it took for people to recognize his talent. Now, what I will not do is boil down his journey strictly to Norfolk State. It's just the most recent place that he's come from. It's just the most recent addition to his resume. And his resume is thick. All right, let's let's get that out the way. His resume is impressive. It looks good when you look at exactly what it is that he's done, he was previously an offensive analyst at the University of Texas, but I feel the need to break this down a little bit farther and beyond just the college ranks, and we'll get to that at the very end. So he's recruited a top five recruiting class. He posted this on Twitter. I, I love when people talk, they talk, right? Like, forget all this. Sometimes I got to talk my talk, and this is a situation where he does it. Put your resume up. Promote yourself. Love yourself. Now, he's recruited a top five recruiting class, and I think it's well documented that I value a good recruiting class, um, though that's not what he's going to be doing here, more likely than not. He might have a part of it, but the only people who probably be recruiting is the running backs. 
He had the number one overall SEAC offense, dropped 71 points in a game. Obviously, these are past um, accomplishments because he was with Norfolk State just last year. But in high school, he was able to put multiple quarterbacks into the D1 into D1 schools. He had a high level offense. I'm talking about top five offenses, I think, every year, he said. And then also won multiple state championships. This is a strong resume for a guy who's going into being a running backs coach. I really do enjoy it. When you're looking at what he did in Norfolk State specifically, they were third in the conference in points scored. How you get to the points is largely irrelevant. They scored the points, right? And, and that was probably the last thing. Maybe that was the last thing he felt like he needed to check off his resume doing this on the FCS level as an offensive coordinator, as a play caller on this level. Maybe that's what he felt because once it happened and he did it well, because they were terrible in scoring defense. Like it was just a drastic difference. They were middle of the pack because it's only 16, but 30 is still pretty impressive. Calling that middle of the pack in 16 is technical, technically right, but it doesn't feel right. So I'm going to say third, right? Um, so you had a good scoring offense, but a really poor defense scoring defense like you just didn't they didn't do that well but when you look at what he was able to accomplish at norfolk state it was good enough to where he was able to make it to the university of buffalo and this is not his first time on the fbs level he was previously with the university of texas as i said at the top of the segment going into norfolk state so this is his return to the fbs level but when i ask you did you think the same thing that i thought when I read the tagline, because one of the first things that I thought about was Willie Simmons. Am I wrong for doing that? Ah, I don't think so. Maybe, but I don't think so. The reason I was so, the reason I came back to it was because they got the same position. When you're looking at Pickering and you're looking at Simmons, both are running backs coaches, but where they started and where they landed are drastically different. Those are probably the two biggest glaring differences in this in this kind of comparison. Both went down position wise. I mean, Willie was an offensive, or excuse me, a head coach who is now a running backs coach, and then Pickering is a offensive coordinator who is now a running backs coach. I don't think either feels bad about it. I don't feel bad about it for them. I'm congratulative of them. But I want to make some sense of it. Willie went down two ranks. Head coach, offensive coordinator, positional coach. Pickering went down one rank. Offensive coordinator, running backs coach, positional coach, right? It also aligns with how much they jumped. I know that the FCS and the FBS are only one away. But let's be honest with you. The power four which is so disgusting to say, but now that the Pac-12 is RIP, yeah, yeah, it's the power four at this point. It's just four real big conferences, the ACC, the SEC, the Pac-12, uh, the Big 12, and then also the Big 10. That's it. That's it right now. Um, there's a difference between the power four and a group of five. That's just real. It's an invisible distinction, but it is very prominent when you look at it. The group of five schools gets no love, right? In the words of my boy Zero, all y'all still get no love. All you get is a you know what. But that's the way that I look at this. You have FBS, but this is dividing the two things the same way that FCS is, de is technically D1. Technically, the FCS is a D1 university, but we know good and doggone well that they ain't looking at Alabama State the same way they're looking at the University of Alabama despite them both being D1. There's just a physical distinction between FBS to FCS, but in the FBS, you go group of five versus power four. It's a difference. So in a way, Willie went up two ranks. I just, and I think that rationalizing or attempting to rationalize something that you don't agree with is always kind of fun because I like trying to see the reasoning behind what people do. Honestly, I think that the relationship with Manny Diaz is the reason that Willie went. That's just how I feel on it. But overall, it does make you wonder if Willie could have waited, which is what I wish he would have done because I really think he could have leveraged himself into an offensive coordinator position. I really do. I really do. But at the end of the day, he made the decision for him that I think allows him to get one step closer to his goal. Even if it didn't move at the, at the pace I wanted to. 
I'll never disagree with that man for that. Do your thing, Willie. I'm proud of you. I'm happy for you. Same to Ray Pickering. I'm proud of you and I'm happy for you. So congratulations to both of those gentlemen. I just want to compare those situations because it didn't make me think of it. And I wondered if it made you think of the same thing. Now, as we move forward, the St. Augustine professor, Mark Janice, right? Dr. Mark Janice at that, has developed an app that I think has a, a, a really high ceiling when it comes to HBCU athletics. Let's explore that as we continue with Locked On HBCU. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel, and FanDuel is the official sports book of the Locked On Podcast Network. Now, we got football. I just had this random feeling. I was scrolling through the blue app. I guess it's not the blue app anymore. I was scrolling through the black app. <laughs> I was scrolling through X, Twitter, social media, whatever, and I saw D'Amico Ryan's coaching up Christian Harris, and I just got this random gush that the Texans are going to do it. If you feel anything like me, go ahead and put a $5 bet on the Texans. Maybe you don't. Maybe you feel like the Ravens are going to do it. Put down a $5 bet on the Ravens. And no matter who comes out victorious, if you put down that $5 bet, win or lose, you will get $150 back in bonus bets if you are new to FanDuel. It's just that simple. Go to FanDuel.com slash locked on. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. And it's a very simplistic thing for you. Put down a $5 money or put down a $5 bet, get $150 back in bonus bets. Whether that's on the NFL playoffs, a regular NBA game, the NHL, uh, what else is in uh, college or oh, college, college basketball. There we go. Any and everything. Go to FanDuel.com slash locked on and make every moment more. As wrapping up today's episode of Locked on HBCU, I appreciate you for making this your first listen of the day every day, making it all the way to segment three. And I thank you two times for that. Now, a St. Augustine professor has developed a an app that I believe has a high ceiling and a high usage rate for HBCU athletics. And I understand that a professor doing it, granted, St. Aug is a, is a, uh, I've never heard anybody call it St. Aug. I just, I, that, that's that Louisiana high school. That's the only one. I don't know. It sounds right, though. I'm, I'm going to call it St. Augustine because I don't want to be disrespectful. Um, but there's a high school in Louisiana called St. Augustine. Everybody calls it St. Aug. So that's just natural. It came out. Anywho, St. Augustine is, is an HBCU. But with it being a professor, you're like, well, what does this have to do with athletics? Well, its usage would be big for athletic programs to be an, a content hub, as, as Janice called it, right? And as a person who deals with this on a daily basis, I'll tell you that I believe this is the problem. I think that the amount of information that gets out about HBCU athletics is a problem. And, it, and not in a way where it's too much information. It's not enough. It's not enough information. Um, I'll read this quote by Janice. He said, our hope is to develop a content base with 50 plus HBCUs by the end of the year. It's just the beginning of the year, so it's a good good goal, right? Um, 50 plus HBCUs by the end of the year, along with a few marquee sponsors and a batch of local advertisers that will generate revenue for all participating schools. By next year, we want to train the majority of participating HBCUs to also function as their own media hubs. Now, what that means, you know, was further explained, but it's not as important to this. I love it because there are a lot of sports at schools that just don't get much publicity, period. But when you're looking at HBCUs, I would argue that a lot of schools don't get publicity, period. As a person who's constantly looking up what's going on in places, it should not be as difficult as it is. It shouldn't. And I everything doesn't need to be hard. Everything doesn't need to be difficult. Like some things can just be easily digestible. Right. And I think that. I think that that's something that has been forgotten. And shout out to the national brands who are covering a bunch of HBCUs. I understand they can't, we can't, because I'm I'm one of them. We can't get everything, right? But with an app like this, and the app is called Schoolcast, S-K-O-O-L-K-A-S-T. I'm going to for sure get it because it's just like Outcast, right? And I actually was just wearing my Outcast shirt yesterday. So um, I got to go ahead and get that. But for me, it feels like information is a free-for-all. Centralize this information. Put it everywhere. Put the volleyball information out there. Put the golf information out there. Put the bowling information out there. It's not just men's basketball in the spring. Go put track and field. Put everything out there and just allow the people to sift through what they want. 
But too often, it's hush hush. It's hard to find. Like it's just, it's not enough promotion. These things should be easier to find, right? That's just that's just how I feel. I do not feel that Google searches for what's happening in HBCU athletics should be a difficult thing to find. If I'm being a prima donna, right? I haven't heard somebody say it in a long time, but if I'm just being right, like maybe I'm being dramatic about it, that's okay. That's how I feel. I think it puts a large amount of responsibility on the schools, but I also think it's good because people want to keep up with HBCUs. There's there's people who are HBCU fans, not just their alma mater, but an HBCU fan. That person should be able to go through and and find something like this. Go to school cast and be like, well, what's going on in St. Augustine? What's going on in Virginia Union? It's not easy to find stories about those schools, right? I'm just I'm just letting you know. Maybe I want to see what's going on with FAMU. What it what it like. I want to see what's going on with the school like Mississippi Valley State. You don't be hearing anything about Mississippi Valley State. This is facts. All right. So I think that this school cast app has an extremely high ceiling. I'm not going to say it's great already. They're still tweaking it. He's doing it with his students there. I like the fact that he's doing it with his students. But overall, you got to look at it and say content hub. All right. I can put all these things for my school, promote my school and maybe even make some money off it, be able to monetize my content. This is a place that I want to be. I think that it was great, and I wanted to highlight it. I know it's not Feature Friday. That's tomorrow, but I wanted to highlight this. On tomorrow's episode, we are going to get to the CIAA and then the SEAC Week Zero options now that it's allowed for D2 schools to actually play a game that week. And we'll look at our Feature Friday, which will be the Houston Oiler to HBCU coaching pipeline. Now, that's interesting to me. And we'll do that on tomorrow's episode. In the meantime, in between time, if you're looking for me, you can find me on Twitter at South Exclusives. Until the next time that we hear each other, family. Take care. Stay blessed. Peace.